guys, Keto for Real Life people here, and today I am just going live. Um, you might have caught my earlier video. I had done a live on Facebook, and uh, it's called 31 Days Keto and Apple Pie. So catch that one if you haven't seen it. Um, I talked about doing 31 days of eating keto. And that is my nod to anybody who's been off track, who's been struggling to get back on plan, who would like to finish out 2020 with a clean slate and be ready for 2021. Um, my challenge to anybody and everybody is just eat keto. You don't have to do fasting. You don't have to do OMAD. You don't have to worry about your macros. You don't have to worry about whether it's clean. You don't have to be worry about whether it's dirty. All you need to do is eat keto for 31 days. And to start it off, I am going to be making some stuffed mushrooms. I've been craving them. I made a small pan for um, our Thanksgiving dinner last week with the family. And I got a couple. The rest were gone in instant. So I thought, hey, this month, I'm only going to pop in and, and cook things that I want to eat. <laughs> I'm not creating anything new that I'm aware of. If I decide to, okay. If not, I'm just going to show you guys what I'm eating for the next 31 days. So far, I've had a keto chow a meal replacement shake, and I had a few slices of um, cheese with a little bit smear of Kerrygold butter on the cheese slices because I just want to get my fat up there. So, anywho, uh, today also I'm doing this live from my phone. So, um, it's not on my computer. I'm not using my computer. So, I really can't see the comments. I guess I could have tried to bring the laptop over here somewhere so that I could uh, keep up with comments. But really, I'm just going to do this quick dish. Um, let's talk ingredients. I haven't got to say that for a while. Um, I'm using portobello mushrooms today. You can use white mushrooms. You could use portobellas. I like to get the portobellas because I just think they have a little bit more flavor. Plus, they just look prettier. Um, I've got about, let's see here, one pound. Yep, one pound of portobello mushrooms. I've got some fresh parsley, onion, garlic. Um, I've got some bratwurst. You can use any kind of ground meat that you want. You want to use ground pork, ground turkey, ground chicken, ground beef, uh, breakfast sausage, whatever ground meat that you prefer will work for this uh, particular dish, this appetizer, if you will. Um, I do have a little red wine. I'm debating because I get to eat them. My husband doesn't like mushrooms. And I think that just a little splash of red wine uh, makes the flavor richer. But again, it's optional. You don't have to use it at all. You could use chicken broth or uh, any kind of broth that you might have. And we're only going to be using a splash is all. Just a little splash for flavor. Um, I've got a little bit of thyme, salt, and pepper. It's really basic. It's simple. You know, when I go out to restaurants, uh, I don't know about y'all, but when I go out to restaurants, a lot of times I'm not in the mood for a huge meal, per se. I just enjoy ordering appetizers. And with that in mind, I mean, I could be the share from the, that movie, The Mermaids, where all she does is make hors d'oeuvres for her children. I'm like, I'm that lady. I could live on hors d'oeuvres. I might, might just grab the laptop really quick so that I can, that way I can check on y'all just a little bit here and I'll just set it right over here out of the way, but I can still pull it up and see it. I also have these big ones and I wanted to figure out what to do with them and I'm not sure. So we're just gonna play in the kitchen, all right? All right, here, hold on, let me see here. Let me go to YouTube and then it shows that I'm live. Oh no, that's not me. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, your channel. I'm one of those that, uh, there I am. Now then, skip ads 
and mute myself. Turn the sound off. There we go. I see that Lisa's in here. There we go. All right. And I'm going to delete that so that, there we go. Now I can see if there's any comments. That makes it a little easier because they scroll. When I'm doing a YouTube video with my phone, they're hidden until I touch them and then they magically float to the top and I can see. But this way I can just look at it every now and then. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you are new to my YouTube channel, welcome. Um, if you want, hit the subscribe button. If you want to hit the notification button, that's great because you'll see if I've uploaded or I'm doing a live or something like that, you'll get notified. Super chat is open and let's get going. All right, so I brought in my handy dandy and I had to go out to my shed and get uh, my cooktop so that I could just do everything right here where you could see it. I'm gonna go ahead and open the bottle of wine. Um, that way it'll be ready for when I want to use it. Now, and we'll talk about mushrooms a little bit too. I need to get some water as well. I'm thirsty as all get out. I am doing that backwards. Ouch, ouch, ouch. I like this little handy dandy gadget. It was part of a Christmas gift. It just cuts the top of this off for you quickly. Makes it easy. And then we're gonna open this. This is um, a Cabernet Sauvignon. It is a 2018. It's by 19 Crimes. It's relatively inexpensive, y'all. Um, I like it. It's a fun wine too because they have an interactive app that you can get and um, you put you you put this face in the box and it starts talking it comes to life and tells you the the true story of the person who committed the crime it's kind of interesting and fun part of that peeled out i don't want it to go down on the bottle okay let's be happy get that out of the way and I'll set this over here Ta -da! put that right there so let's talk about the mushrooms y'all I like to brush them off if you will just with a piece of paper towel you do not want to wash mushrooms they are fungus they don't take kindly to the moisture but you can take just a dry paper towel and just lightly brush off any dust or impurities and that's about all you want to do and just kind of go over them like that i pick oh these are some nice ones they're nice and big sometimes I, I like them actually to be more uniform in size um something more along this line here i wish they were all about this size they're about two inches in diameter so if you can find those they're to me they, they're better than these big giant ones because they cook more evenly and they just make prettier presentation as well. Ooh, that one really had some dirt on it. Let's just brush it off. And, oh, I need to preheat my oven. We want to make sure that it's nice and hot. There we go. Get that going. Has anybody ever tried them? I mean, they're easy to make. And they're things you don't think about, you know, like... On keto, I don't know if you sit there and dream about mushrooms or not, but think about it. They're super high in potassium. They are very, very adaptable to flavors. So they're very nutritious. They're easy to work with. They are great if you're on a budget. If you're trying to stretch a pound of ground beef, for instance, you could get a pound of mushrooms or even a half a pound of mushrooms for $1.88 and add it to a pound of ground beef or whatever meat you're cooking. Oh, that's a dirty one. Um, and you can double your meat. And nine times out of 10, if you don't say anything to anybody, your family members will not know that you have uh, doubled up on mushrooms and they're eating them. I have kids that I can't stand mushrooms. I don't like them. Don't give them to me. Well, when you put it, run them through a food processor or you just chop them up super, super fine and then put them in there with that meat and you put spaghetti sauce or whatever it is you're making, your chillins won't melt. Neither will your husband if he doesn't like them either. Oh, I'm gonna use this for just a second. 
All right, the other thing I'm gonna do is get my brats. Um, these, uh, they do have a little bit of corn syrup on them, but I have to use them up and I'm going to. So they won't have terribly amount. I mean, one brat, and I, you don't need a whole pound for this many mushrooms either, by the way. You can do what I do and, and you use your leftover meat for another dish. It works out great. Let me throw this away though. So I like to take a, a little knife and I take my brats and I just split the skin just like that and put it in the pan. You don't want to use the casing on it because it's chewy and we don't want that. So I will cook up the whole pound, even though I won't use the whole pound for this. Oops, I need to sharpen my knife, I guess. Did everybody have a good Thanksgiving? I had one of the best Thanksgivings ever, 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 ever. I haven't had all five of my children home for the holiday. And I tell you what, uh, that has not happened in more than 20 years. So I felt very, very just blessed being surrounded by all five of my kids and my grandbabies and my husband. And But it was just special, super special. Let's see here. I see you guys are popping in here. Okay, while I'm doing this, I will talk to y'all. I did do that Facebook uh, Live, and I did talk about 31 days of keto. Um, I was going to take a break for the month of December and just not do anything, anywhere. Just be off for the whole month. I've been going on three years of keto, and this year, like a lot of folks, I found this year to be very rough and discouraging. <laughs> And I struggled and because of that I can't take a break I have to keep going and I have to be on plan I want to finish out this year on a good note I want everybody who's struggled with 2020 on their keto journey to master it again you know what I mean so by doing that I thought of the best way to um, approach it you know the best way to approach getting back on track if you've fallen off is to just start eating fatty foods again. Make fat a priority in your life. Get your moderate protein. Keep your carbs low. If you're craving fat bombs, eat fat bombs. If you want to make keto cookies, make keto cookies. If you want to buy a Quest Bar, buy a Quest Bar. I'm not going to tell anybody that they need to eat clean, drink bone broth. I've been saying it. I've been saying it. But really, what you need to do is just eat what you need to do, whatever it takes to stay keto. So I think that's just a simple approach. And then, you know, in 31 days, you can be fat adapted. And when we go into January, if we want to start adding back in the intermittent fasting regimen and, and start paying more attention to our macros and eliminating this and doing that, it's, you know, it just, sometimes it just gets overwhelming. That, you know, you just don't want to do it anymore. Sometimes it's just easier to say, I just want to be like the regular folks. I just want to eat whatever. I just want to watch whatever. I just want to be normal. But the price is not worth it. It's like when you're young, you know, and you go start experimenting and you're out partying with your friends, you know, through your 20s. You're, you can drink it up and never have a hangover. You can, you can get away with it for so long. But eventually, you start getting hangovers and you feel like crap the next day and you realize, hey, this isn't worth it. <laughs> well, I, I kind of relate to that with keto. Uh, eating keto gave me optimum health. It just, I felt wonderful all the time. Um, yes, I had weight loss, but I lost so much in, in inflammation in my joints. My pain levels were down, no GERD, no this, no that. My labs were wonderful. And to go off plan like I've been doing off and on, off and on this last year with the hormones, with the 2020 pandemic, with the this, with the that, um, it, it's like having a hangover and you just feel terrible. That song was not good. I got some Christmas music playing. Um, and you know, eating off plan, I realized it's just not worth it. Maybe sometimes you need to fall off just so you can appreciate where you were. All right. 
So my next step, I've got my meat over here. I've got my mushrooms all cleaned off here. Now I've got my knife and hopefully it's sharp enough. I sharpened it the other day. Yeah, it's still got a little blade on it. We're just gonna take some onion, not the whole thing. For about a, a, a pound of meat, you probably just only wanna use about maybe a third to a half, probably half an onion. And I always take off the big thick skin. So this is about where we're at. I'm gonna use about half of that. And we are going to dice it up. When you're, when you're dicing, guys, I like to run my, the point of my knife in there and out. I usually try not to cut all the way through. Let's remember knife safety technique. I don't know if any of you, ooh, that's a stout onion. I can feel my eyes watering. You know, you, you don't wanna put your hands where you're gonna cut at your fingers or not. You just kinda wanna grip it. I, put, I just like grab it and then start slicing. For this, we're just gonna do just a normal traditional dice. Move your fingers back. As we go, oh God, I can't wait till this is done. I, I can feel my mascara getting ready to run over here. And then I top it down and I just, leaving my knife on the board, I just run that list, last little bit through there. And then this should break up just so, like so. And if it doesn't, you can find the pieces and give a couple of run throughs. Oh, here we go, golly. Winter time brings crying eyes. They say if you put a matchman between your teeth, it won't happen, I don't know. A funny thing is, I wear con only one contact. I wear the contact in my right eye. And it protects my eye from the onion, whereas my left eye doesn't get that same. <laughs> so I only water one eye. Boy, it was a doozy, too. I'm going to get my little scraper out here. And I'm just going to move that over there, out of my way. And then I'm going to grab some garlic. Do as much or as little garlic as you like. You can use garlic powder if you like. Um, you can use jarred garlic. I just happen to have fresh on hand. So I'm just going to crack my garlic. Well, that one went flying. So we got two garlics instead of three cloves and you just give it a little crack and it breaks that hard shell around it. It's like a little garlic nut, you know? And then we're going to do the same thing. Let's see if I got it cracked good enough here. Yes, I did. And out it goes. And we'll get rid of this. Ooh. Even my garlic is stout. I'm telling you what, I must be sensitive. Move that out of my way. That handle is, space is at a premium here. I'm gonna smash it out and smash it out. That way it'll mince easier and just run it through. I guess I got my nose running. Oh my God. <laughs> Ooh, I chose some savory vegetables today, let me tell you. Oh. Goodness, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Stout garlic, stout onion. All right, onward and upward. Let's get this out of the way. Food prep is necessary, by the way. Makes your job easier. And really, it doesn't take that long, but you know, with me running my mouth and talking the way I do, that's what, that's where it, that's what it makes it longer. All right. I want to take my mushrooms, and I do like to just slice off that la that one little bit right there, you know, that very tip. I don't know where that tip has been. So I just kind of trim it off a little bit. And then I break this out. I just pull it to the side. And what I like to do, and I don't always do it. Oh, it is right here. Yeah. I have a... Um, of measuring spoons and I, I look at the size of my mushrooms so if I need to I like how they're rounded so I will take usually the half a teaspoon and I will go to the bottom this one looks really good but I will be ready because not all of them will do that and I'm gonna pop this one out this one looks good oh my goodness 
These are some actual short stems. Now see, this one's got a little bit thicker. So I scrape, because I want to be able to fit the filling in there. And so I make that circle a little bit bigger and I just take that mushroom, see? Nice, nice. Pop it out. Again, just kind of take that little bit of membrane around the edges with your teaspoon, scrape it, give it a scrape, and it opens it right up. And chop these edges off here. If I don't do it, I'll forget. Just really don't want those on there. And plus, they get dried out and a little tough. So it doesn't have to be that much, just a thin little sliver off the bottom. Ooh, guess what's on tonight, y'all? Anybody like NCIS? <laughs> I love it. Man, last week I was so shocked. I was uh, I was busy in the kitchen cleaning from a bunch of cleaning, I guess, I was doing and dinner and whatnot. And my husband was in the living room right next to me watching the TV. And he was waiting for the voice, I guess. He loves that show. And... Um, He's watching E.T. in the meantime, and I find that just that stuff annoys me. Everything, it all annoys me. All of a sudden, though, they mentioned Mark Harmon, and I was like, what? I perked up. And they're like, tonight on, on channel whatever, uh, NCIS episode 400. I was like, oh, are you serious? So, yes, NCIS is on. And I've never sat here and waited so anxiously as I have for season 18. I've watched all 17 seasons. Went ahead and took all those little membranes out because they will let me put more meat in there. There we go. There we go. And you know what, when you're filling these, this tablespoon comes in very handy too for putting in just what you need. Just, you can see it's just the white little spot right there. And you just pull it out, it takes the rest of the stem down. It doesn't tear your mushroom cap up. That one's done. Okay, those are all done. I shall keep going. This one has been trimmed all the way to the base. If you happen to break a mushroom, just throw in your mushroom pile that you're gonna be chopping up, not a big deal. Like that. I have got to be careful. Hey Google, shut down. Yeah. So if they hear any type of music that, uh, might have a copyright on it, they will shut my stuff down uh, just that quick. So I try to be very careful about what I what music I let play in the background. Plus, you know, some people find it distracting. I have it low, but I enjoy Christmas music nonstop when it's December. I just, like, as soon as Thanksgiving's over, I'm on it. I'm not one of those pre-Thanksgiving no people. I know people who, uh, who like to set their tree up as soon as Halloween's over, you know, like November 1st, their tree is up. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I love Christmas, but I feel like if I were to set my Christmas tree up and do decorations that early, by the time Christmas came down, I wouldn't have a tree. I'd already have to put it up. It'd be just too long. I like the feeling of anticipation and putting it all up. And then once it's time to go down, I like the feeling of how spacious my house feels and clean. Because <laughs> it seems cluttery with the stuff all over the place, you know? I got a lot of mushrooms over here that I forgot about. Let's just trim it up real quick. Here we go. There we go. And pop those out. And then I can see. Hello, Miss Nancy. I don't know, CW. Saw your last video. You look great. Your sweater, and yes, it looks good on you. Oh, thank you very much. 
Look, I got a sleeveless summer top on underneath it because I'm like, I want a sweater on. It's kind of cold today. Uh, but if I put too much on, then my hormones take over and I'm on fire. So I figured it out. I was like, I'm just going to put the sleeveless top on. Oops, I broke a mushroom. See? But not too terribly bad. Just a tiny bit right there. So looky here, y'all. Now we have this wonderful pan of mushrooms. You could do a little drizzle of olive oil or, or, or um, avocado oil if you so choose and give a little flavor to these. Just a little bit though. You don't need a whole heck of a lot. This is for cooking purposes, not for macros. I'm just gonna put my fingers over the top of this so that I can control how much is coming out and I want it to come out really thin. And I'm just kind of splashing a little bit of olive oil or avocado oil on there. I'll put my lid back on. I'm gonna wipe my hands off really quick. Then I've got this salt. This is a real salt. It is kosher, so it's a little bit bigger, but that'll make it even the better, right? So we'll just add a little bit on top. Those are prepped. Oh, sorry, little mushroom. You can get a little olive oil on you too. There we go. There we go. So there we go. Now then, we're gonna take this little bit of mushrooms right here, and we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the onion and the garlic, and we're just gonna mince it up, and it's gonna be part of our filling. And just back and forth. And now you can see why I trimmed the ends off, because I didn't want those dried, exposed ends in my, my filling. And just keep mincing. In the meantime, let's turn this on. We're gonna get it on fry, and I think we'll take the temp down to about 350. There we go. Just back and forth. You want it to be consistent in, in the size of it. Um, and you want it to be small because you want it to fit in those little mushrooms with the ground beef. So think about whatever meat you're using or ground pork or whatever about what size the crumbles are and that gives you an approximate idea of how to chop your mushrooms. You can also get your food processor out really quick and make quick work of this, but mine is already out in the shed again. I had to go out the shed to get this. And I put the food processor food processor out there this morning, so. And they'll tell me, you should get rid of that because you don't use it as often. Well, no, because I got them right out to the shed. I've got a pretty well equipped kitchen. I just don't have a big enough kitchen. <laughs> I don't have enough ca cabinet space. The kitchen shape is fine. The cabinet space is mm, no bueno. All right, see here? We're pretty consistent in size. And you're just gonna take a spatula. I like to use a wooden spatula when I'm browning my meat. And I've got a nice large skillet. That's kind of important too because you don't want all the moisture to, in a smaller skillet, you're gonna get a lot of moisture from the meat and the mushrooms. I like this larger skillet because it kind of lets it evaporate out quicker and that's what we want. Traditional breadcrumbs, uh, I could have swore I felt like a vibration in that spatula. Hmm. You know, like if this handle split, I've had this, I don't know, my whole time I've ever cooked. Um, traditional breadcrumbs use bread, or stuffed mushrooms, they usually use breadcrumbs as well as Parmesan cheese. But I find that you don't need pork panko. You could use pork panko and Parmesan cheese mixture. But I just like the Parmesan cheese. It, it browns and it has just a little bit of crunch to it, so. that going. And once this starts browning well, then I'm going to add in the rest of our vegetable. In the meantime, I'm going to go down to 300. I don't think I need this anymore, so let's throw it away. 
We're also going to use some parsley. I've got some flat leaf parsley here. And it also brings a little element of flavor into the dimension. And I'm going to take it, and I don't need a lot, okay? You just want a little bit. I'm going to say maybe out of this whole bunch, that's probably going to be as much as I need. Do you see this here? I was trying to keep my cat, my work surface clear for you. So maybe about two to three tablespoons worth. And we're going to finally chop it up. I might need a little bit more for garnish, but we'll, we'll go there if we need to. I'm just going to put that right there like that. Keep this moving. I like bratwurst. If you can find it without sugar, that's awesome. I grabbed this. I didn't even look at the uh, ingredients on it, quite honestly. But I like the, the, the seasoning. I, you know, I think it's the fennel in it that makes it taste so darn good. I suppose I could just do ground pork and add my own seasoning, but you know, uh, it is what it is. I went for easy and convenient. So now that that's starting to break up nicely, we shall chop. I'm just gonna kinda squish my parsley. Uncle Johnny, next door, starting that dang boat. Uh, again, technique-wise, you want to keep your knife grounded so that you have more control over it, and you want your fingers bent so that you're not putting your fingers in harm's way. And I, I just kind of pull this in, and then again, like that. And then you want to kind of just pull it back in, and, and just, again, fine chop it. You can use your hand as a flat guard. Move this out of the way. Give myself some room to work. There we go. You see, I'm keeping it all grounded. And I, they say now you shouldn't put your finger up here, but you know, I don't think the people who made those rules were women with little hands. So I like to pinch right here. For me, it works. There we go. So that's nice. That's a rough chop. Pretty consistent. Get this going. I am fixing to do a video, and I'm going to record it. I'm not going to do it live just because it takes so long. But I put my turkey carcass in the freezer, and I am fixing to make some bone broth with it. I also had a leftover rotisserie chicken carcass, which was in the freezer. So I'm just going to combine my carcasses, and um, probably tomorrow I'll be... Uh, putting together just a little short video on how easy it is to make your own bone broth. And if you have your turkey carcass still, hopefully you do, I've got a ham bone, a turkey carcass, and a chicken carcass. Uh, it's just, it's, it's delicious, man. I use a combination of um, turkey bone, uh, drippings from my turkey, and then I have some chicken bone broth to bring up the volume just a little bit more. And we had the best. Everybody was like, man, that gravy. It was my second favorite thing at, at Thanksgiving was the gravy. It was so rich and delicious. All right, so that's now starting to brown. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scraper and I'm gonna go ahead and just add my mushrooms, onion, and garlic. And get it all in the pan so that they can play together. I don't know why I do that. I'm not going to do my parsley yet. I want to add it closer to the end because I don't want it to be too wilty and bitter. I want it to be fresh. Fresh, I say. Um, you can also, guys, you, there's so many ways you can do this. You can use spinach if you like, chopped spinach in this. Um, you could do peppers. You can use Italian seasoning. And because this is bratwurst, it already has some seasoning, so I don't have to go really heavy on it. I just, I'm gonna kick this back up a little bit. I am gonna give just a slight pinch of salt for the veg I added just now. You know, just like, just a tiny little sprinkle. And I wanna add a little bit of black pepper. To me, that's about mm, half a teaspoon, give or take. Do you boo. 
You do your boo. Oops, and I keep big old pan and I keep flinging my meat out. Okay. But see here, this is lovely because it has room to do its thing. And like I said, you don't need that much of this meat. I just do a pound up at the time because whatever I don't use for my mushrooms, I can use for anything else. I can put in my eggs. I can, you know, just put any sauce with it I want. Add vegetables. It's just versatile. Very, very versatile. Now, if you like, um, you could add just a little extra thyme, which I'm going to. I like it. I'm going to... This is whole thyme leaves. You can get ground. If you're using ground leaf or ground thyme, go with very little, like a pinch. Um, I'm using a pinch of this, and really, I can grind it. I can grind it, because I don't want the little prickly leaves in there. If it was a soup or a stew, it'd be fine, because it would soften really well. And I'm, and I'm sure it probably won't even make a difference, but I've got this little mortar and pestle that I guess I can take the uh, angel wing and the sugar-free uh, butterscotch out of. And I'll just drop that in here and, and I'll just grind it down and break it down just a little bit. I don't like the leaves getting stuck between my teeth. I love having this porter and mortar and pestle. It's wonderful. My favorite thing to put in my porter and mortar and my porter and mortar. <laughs> my mortar and pestle is uh, peppercorns. Oh. Fresh cracked black pepper horse is so good. I love pepper. So there we go. And now I just do that. I'll put that over there out of my way. Let's see what you got going here. I can smell the onion from here. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you what, it was stout. You want to cook this long enough so that you can soften your onions, but you also want your mushrooms to start releasing their liquids. And then you'll notice that they kind of start changing color as they kind of caramelize in the pan. So. It makes it delicious. And once you get that, which these are nice and soft, then, then you can add a little bit of broth because that's just going to enrich your meat. It's going to make it a little more juicy. I like doing it. You don't have to. Or you can use a little red wine. I'm just going to go blood, blood. One blood, two bloods. My second blood was a little bigger. I find that red wine, I mean, I love it with beef and pork and stuff. It, and then when you add a little butter to wine, holy moly, it is delish. Now this is all brown. That's how quick it is. But I want my some of mine to break down just a little bit finer. I got a few bigger pieces. And I want them broken down. I need to invest in one of those little, uh, you know, hamburger breaker downer things. I think Pampered Chef sells them. By the way, speaking of Pampered Chef, and I know, Facebook, it doesn't matter. I get a ton of invitations every day. Of course, when you have, you know, 31,000 followers or subscribers, and they all want to, you know, have their Pampered Chef party, don't be offended when I decline it because I just decline them all. <laughs> guys you don't realize how many invitations there are and quite honestly if I was to go to a pamper chef party it would be my sister-in-law because one of her friends is a pamper chef lady and she had a pamper chef party a couple years ago and I went to it got a couple of cool things and uh, other than that no you guys I just can't do them let me give this a little taste I don't want to scrape the bottom of the pan. I just want to get my flavor. Mm. That wine sends it over the top. If you've got, if you like red wine, then try this. If you don't, it'll be good, I promise. But I love the red wine. Just a couple of gloves is all it takes. 
Now then, I've turned the heat off. My meat is browned. My mushrooms and onions are all tender. There's a little bit of thyme, a little pepper, a little bit of salt. Very little on it, y'all. It doesn't need a lot because I used brats. If you're using plain ground beef, you would increase the amount of seasoning. Now that that's done, it's still hot. Now I want to throw my parsley. Just throw it on there. Make it beautiful. Ooh, it's so gorgeous. I love it. All right. Let me get this little piece of onion skin and just do this and give it a stir. Now this will brighten it up. It, it instantly turns into a beautiful green and it adds just another level of flavor. Uh, there we go. All right. Now let me just, let me just scrape this here. And what we're going to do, we're going to get our little pan of mushrooms. I need to get some Parmesan cheese. I've got the shredded, pre-shredded, right here. There we go. And I'll have that there. So now I'm going to take just my tablespoon. Uncle Johnny, I swear. I haven't done a live in two weeks. I do a live. He goes next door. He's like, I'm going to play with my boat. He's 90 years old. And he likes to just pull it around into the garage and put the water hose to it. So we're gonna put this just like that, okay? Can you see that? It's it's slightly heat. And I like to just pick up my mushroom top and I poke it in there a little bit. And then I get it on top and I set it down. It's so easy, there's no rhyme or reason to this. This one's a little smaller, so it gets a little less. And then we'll go on to the next one. It's just loverly, I tell you. A little red, uh, crushed red pepper, if you like a little heat. You could make these a little spicy, if you like. You could even do a taco themed uh, mushrooms. I mean, I guess in, when I put this recipe in my website, which I have not done yet, y'all, you're just hopefully watch the video and follow along. It's, like I said, it's not a difficult one. But I just need to do like stuffed mushrooms, however many ways I can think of because basically it's just a matter of seasoning. If you're using a ground meat, you know, for instance, tacos, you're gonna use more cumin and taco seasoning and stuff like that. Italian, Italian seasoning. You could do Greek with feta cheese. I mean, it's totally up to you. You could even do French, because French and mushrooms and butter and red wine, a little camber, mmm. Whoop, 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 I almost knocked that out. See, these bigger ones now, they're, they can hold quite a bit. They'll be like, I can eat my heart's content to these tonight. Why? Because I'm eating keto, y'all. Not worrying about macros this month. I'm not going to stress about all the food choices. I'm just going to keep it keto. There we go. On top. And see, I still have about a half a pound of this now. A half, well, probably a half the mixture, I should say. It's a big chunk of meat. Let's do a little bitty, little bitty crumbles. And just be generous. There we go. You can line your paper, your pan with parchment paper too to save on mess, but these really don't stick. They don't make a huge mess, even with a little bit of Parmesan cheese that I'm gonna just pop on here. Um, it'll be fine. I just didn't feel like messing with parchment paper today. But just a little pile of cheese on top of each one. As little as much as you like, whatever it'll stay on top. Just little sticks. And then we are going to take them. I probably should have used parchment paper because I don't have lots of cheese. <laughs> and there we go. They just look picture perfect just like that. 
but it doesn't take long because the mixture is still hot. Mushrooms are very quick to cook, so we're going to get those in there. Um, I've got this at about mm, 375. Give it a little turn up. I had it at 350. But you just want to get them hot and give them about five minutes. And then we will turn the broiler on if they need a little more browning. And I'm going to get this cleaned up really quick. Hurrah! Let me put this over here. My onion, my parsley, my cheese, my spoon and knife, my scraper, and my seasonings. I just want to make room for this everything. Let's set this over here. Now I'm going to wipe this down. And I've got to sit here and think about this because I have two big fat portobello mushrooms. I sometimes don't feel like making pizza crust. So I will use portobellas and I will broil them until they're nice and soft. And then I will fill them with a little bit of pizza sauce, a little mozzarella, a little, you know, whatever I happen to have on hand. This could be a wonderful, um, like sausage crumble for a, a sausage pizza, but you could definitely use it that way. I think what I will do is, I put my meat over here. Ow. Oh, is that too hot? Not too bad. I'm gonna set it out of my way and wipe that off. Grab another pan. Oh, I got the skillet right here. I have skillets everywhere. These go in my oven because I have no room for them anywhere else. But I have another skillet and mm, don't mind my elbow, y'all. I'll go to see the doc after the first of the year. I'm not doing this month at all. Just not doing it. Oh, I do really do need a knife. So I've got this ground beef that I bought at the store and I need to break it down into packages. So. Uh, to, for, to go in the freezer. But in the meantime, I think what I'll do is take a little bit of it, probably about a third of a pound. I'm going to take this and move it up here. I will deal with that afterwards. And um, I got my little thing there. So I got a little bit of this. I'm going to turn this back on. We're going to go back to fry. And we're going to go at about 350. Why not make a burger? I just want to use it up. I'm hungry. I, I uh, had my keto chow shake this morning during my live, and then I had a little wedge of cheese that I sliced up that was left over from something else, and I can't wait for the mushrooms to be done. So I'm just taking this. You don't need to season ground beef for a hamburger. If you were to go to a steakhouse or something like that, you see how I'm just kind of uh, playing <laughs> playing with it and it's a little thicker on the outside but I'm kind of smushing it and keeping it round. It keeps your burger from shrinking down so much. But I'm going to just take it and get this pan nice and hot and I'm going to pop a burger down and I'm just going to use this as my bun. Talk about an ultimate mushroom burger. Oh, yeah. I will take and throw a little salt down in the pan when it's ready. I'll wash my hands real quick again. And I'm going to look at my, my pan of mushrooms here. And I think, yes, they're coming along beautifully. And I think that tonight I will enjoy just a titch of this. Now, I want to show you a trick, y'all. There we go. That's just about two to three ounces of red wine. That is all, okay? So a serving of wine is four to five ounces, depending on, usually five on the red. And it has like four total carbs per glass. If you were sitting there drinking wine, you could get kind of tipsy and you could be consuming more carbs. But what I like to do is take that and I make a spritzer or a cocktail with it. You can 
I, I prefer non-sweetened flavored sparkling water. Uh, I went to Walmart yesterday. Sip zero nada. All they had was grapefruit, you know, and citrus, and I was not into it. But all the other flavors I like were gone. Because that's the way Walmart is these days. So I have this clear brand. It's zero calorie. Peach. And I put it into this. And I put it as, as much as I like. And then I make a big old fat glass. And it tastes like a peach bellini. Has anybody ever had a peach bellini? Ah, oh, they're so delicious. I used to go to Johnny Carino's back in the day and I'd always order a peach bellini. It was a blended uh, wine with a peach slushy schnapps right down the middle and it was so good. Oh, so good, man. I'm telling you. All right, so this is smoking, as you can see. Wipe my hands. Get this salted. I'm going to turn this down just a pitch now. I'll give it a little bit of kosher salt on it. And then I've got these mushrooms here, which are pretty good size. I mean, it's really big. I can't, I couldn't use both of them as buns. I really can't. So you could actually just, look, look how big that is. These you can cook, you can throw them on the grill, a little olive oil, avocado oil, a little salt, grill them whole, and then just slice them like you would a steak. Um, I love sliced mushrooms. Like, that is just a beautiful mushroom right there. Clean, beautiful, gorgeous, darling, just gorgeous. But I'm going to use this one. It's a little less pretty, a little bit more broken up around. I'm going to pop out the cap. Ta-da. And I'm going to see, I was wanting to see if I could just fit it in there. And I kind of can, so I'm going to. Just gonna let it cook alongside it. Um, the oils from the fat from the meat will come across it and I can just go back and forth. Mm. And I'm gonna just leave this little mushroom right there and I'm gonna look at the comments now. Let's see what we got going on. I'll bring it up into view. Into view! Okay, here we go. Let me move that. Here we go. Hi, Tina and CW and Amelia and Linda. Man, answer the door and miss the first of this live. Oh, it's all right. Uh, Lisa, love mushrooms. I bought my hamburger thing at Walmart. Yeah, that's where I got mine too. And that's it. That's all we got. I don't even know how many people we have in here today. Ah, uh, 17. Woohoo! We're, we're growing in numbers, y'all. Do me a favor. If you find value in what I'm bringing to you today, hit the share button. Share it somewhere. Share it on YouTube. Let people know over there or YouTube, Facebook. Let them know, hey, Nancy's live. I can't kind of do that. Well, maybe I can. Maybe I can. Uh, copy. Yeah. Close. Over here. Just put it out there. I'll put it out there. There we go. Ah. Paste. No. Uh, paste. Yay. And then I will hit um, return and hit stuffed mushrooms. And maybe more people will see it. Yay. There we go. Oh, I don't just get to do that. <laughs> I have to actually hit post. And then, there it goes. And now I'm back with you guys. Yay. Oy. Let me put this back over here so that I'll have room to work. And we're going to need a plate to put these on. Hey, look, it's a plate. Has anybody ever had a peach bellini? Oh. You could also add ice. So good. You can also freeze your wine and then put it in a slushy or a blender and make it slush with that. It's so good. All right, I do need a spatula. We'll do a spatula. I never get to use this one. I, I like it. I, this is a pampered chef spatula, by the way. Just saying, it's super heavy. But 90% of the time I'm using um, non-stick, 
so I don't get to use this, but when I'm doing cast iron, I'm like, yay, my, my big commercials, handy dandy. Here we go. See, now I've got fat. I know you can't probably see down in the pan. I wish I had somebody recording for me because they could come right over the top. You can see the fat starting to seep out and it's just traveling right over there to that mushroom. So that is awesome. And I'm gonna check this. Yes, got a nice little crust on it. And we're just gonna keep going. It's the side note, it's not the stuffed mushroom. I'm just cooking that while I'm killing time over here. Um, I'll put my plate right there. My mouse is there. And I'm gonna check what I do with this. Pad. I swear I could lose anything. That's just me. Oh yeah. You see there? It took about eight minutes and these are already golden. I'm gonna see if I can pull those to you. Aren't those lovely? So beautiful. They're hot. I can see the liquids coming right out of them. And I can just use my other spatula. That big one would be just a little too much. So you can just take these. Oh, and then I drop it because that's Nancy. Just right there. They're slippery little suckers. And make a plate of these. You can take these, guys. Think about Christmas parties. Like, I've got a Christmas party on the 18th. It's a girls' weekend, girls' night in type of deal with a gift exchange. And um, I'm guaranteeing you, not one of them's keto but me, which I've been dealing with for a couple of years now. Um, and this would be a great appetizer because. It's going to be liked by everybody, but you get to eat it. Because I won't be getting to eat the chips or the cookies or all the other things that they will be bringing. And you can take and just scrape up your good little bits here. Get this wonderful little cheese and just pop it all over the top. You move this back over here out of the way. And then, last but not least, I've got just another little pinch of my parsley. And again, I'm going to just I run my knife through it. I run it right back through it. Parsley smells so fresh. It's so good. There we go. Get a nice little thing and then just give it a fresh, 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 fresh. And it's just lovely. I think I did get them all on the plate. There we go. Ta da! Look at this, y'all. Don't those look great? Let me just try one for you. <laughs> I find them so darn delicious. Mmm. Little red wine. To me, that's a meal. I mean, that's more than a meal. I mean, you could just sit here. And pretty much be guilt free. Mush mushrooms are low in calories. I don't count carbs and vegetables. Your meat, your fats are good. You could even do bacon on these. I mean, just whatever you want to, but this is what I've been craving. This is what I've been wanting. Get that a little turn over here. And I'm going to let those fats kind of just get over on them. Uh, do a little. A little float on that one, too. There we go. But, yes. Yes, these are so good. I'll just sit here and, if I can hold on to them. 
I hope you try them. Please do me a favor. If you make these, make sure you come back and comment that how you like them. Let me know. If you've made these before, comment. Let me know your experience. What is your favorite stuffed mushroom? Or what is your favorite recipe? I'd love to hear from you. Mmm. 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 Let me see here. Um, nom, 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 nom. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Looks great. Hello there, Tony. All right. Well, we're going to have this here. I guess I can just, uh, yeah. I'm going to give my, my burger a smushy here. I'll keep it going. My intention for this, you guys, is I'm just letting this mushroom cook in the pan and get tender. I'm going to salt and pepper, or just salt it. I don't want to pepper it. I just want to salt it so that it gets some flavor. Like I said, they soak up. There we go. Until it's nice and tender. And about the time that it's tender, I should be able to put this burger on it. If I wanted to caramelize some onions, let's just do it, darn it. All right. If you want to bounce, you can go bounce, but I gotta finish this out. I gotta, I gotta be creative because I was like, I just don't know. I'm thinking for this one that I will do a breakfast mushroom with this one. Um, yeah, cook it. You could broil these, by the way. Put them in the oven. I could wrap this in a little foil, a little olive oil, and just pop it in the oven and let it cook off. Pull it out. Top it with some scrambled eggs, some sausage, some bacon, some cheese, some cilantro, some salsa whatever floats your boat and make a wonderful breakfast with a cap mushroom so mm. but this is coming along nicely it's getting that nice feel to it the juices are coming out it's gonna be lovely oh it's looking so good it's like a big old burger let's see here you are making me hungry <laughs> So, I'm just going to keep going around and picking at these little ones. Mm. I'll tell you what, because I'm having a burger thing going on in my head. I have this, uh, you know, y'all know what my favorite cheese is right it's the cabot extra sharp white cheddar cheese i always buy the big i buy the big brick and what i'm gonna do let's get a different knife i like something a little longer thinner and narrower and i want to take two slices of this i had a cheese slicer but i don't know where it went probably in the shed somewhere <laughs> I'm just going to try to make that is, there we go, that'll work. Just need a little bit. And I fold it back over. I find that if I take the package off, it gets slimy. So I leave the package on, I fold it over, and then I wrap it. Or I put it in a Ziploc bag, but I'm out of Ziploc bags. We keep going to the store and forgetting everything. Yesterday we went and got home and I was like, oh dang, we forgot coffee and coffee filters and milk. My husband drinks milk. So he went to the store today. Coffee, coffee filters, and milk. So I'm like, oh shoot. Well, now I'm out of storage bags. And I need them because I have to do that. Do my hamburger. So anyways, and you just tighten it right back up. I was off. Get this. Oh, yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Now then. So, what I'm going to do here, again, some folks would be like worrying about their macros, but hey, baby, I'm all about the flavor right now. 
And it's important when you're starting out on keto all over again, because basically what you're doing is you're just doing your keto restart. You eat, do what? You eat until you're satisfied. And it comes quickly when you're eating fat. So now I have some sliced mushroom, or onion. I'm gonna get me another plate. I'm going to set this cooked mushroom calf right there, uh, right there in the center, okay, and I'm going to add, oh, that's wine, it's not oil, and I'm going to add, turn this down just a titch, a splash, just a splash of avocado oil, and I'm going to put my onions in there. You could easily make up some bacon, but hey, this is quick. We're almost down to it. A little salt for the onion. Always salt your onions. Helps bring the moisture out. We're going to do that. I'm going to give these a little, a little stir in here with a little hamburger fat. There's not a lot of hamburger fat in here, by the way, because it, it was absorbed by the mushrooms. So now you've got fat in your mushroom, and you are, the lower and slower you go with your onions, the more caramelized they're getting, but I'm just grilling them like if, like if I was at a restaurant. We're going to take a little of the white cheddar. Yeah, yeah, see? There we go. That's all I need. I don't need that much. I don't need all of it. That's good. We got it good. We need a drink. Salud. Oh, it's so delicious. I know, I say it every time. Welcome up. We're gonna give these a stir. I just want them nice and tender and flavorful. They're already kind of brown from the pan. They're picking up the flavor from the mushroom, from the hamburger patty. Just keep them going. If you want now, you can grab a lid as I'm going to do. That will take your cheese down. It'll help soften your mushrooms up. That's how quick you can have a, a meal. Like a huge, nice, pretty mushroom cap, some ground beef, some sauteed onions, a little bit of cheese. If you want to top it with bacon, sliced avocado, uh, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Just get creative. It kicks up your flavors like you would not believe. Cheese is starting to melt down. Kick it up. Just a niche. Just a notch. Right there. Knife. Knife. You can top this with, with whatever you like. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Really quick. Really quick. Butter. You know what I'm going to do, don't you? Who can guess? My, my burger is softened down, and now it's going on top of that beautiful cap. I've got my onions. I'm going to turn this down to 250, which they will finish melting off that cheese, which is already softened. Gels. I might have to change the title of this video to what to do with mushrooms. <laughs> I don't know. We shall see. Okay, now then, I'm going to take a little bit of this butter here, and I'm going to, I should, I did it in reverse, dang it, oh well, it'll still work, I should have done this first, splash, glug, glug, that's it, just a couple little glugs, and now I'm going to take these little bits, the butter, any little bits from my pan from the ground beef and the mushroom and I am going to just let it quickly reduce and it'll thicken. So you could have this as a beef bourguignon mushroom burger. I might need a little touch of butter. Let me see. Let me see. 
what my flavor profile is. It's pretty buttery, but I do need a little salt because that was unsalted butter. And maybe just a little pepper. There we go. Almost out of pepper. And now, You really want it to reduce. You want the alcohol to cook out of it. You just want to be left with flavor. And you want the flavor to condense. You want the beef to condense. You want that wine to condense. You want the flavor of that butter. And voila. Oh, voila, voila, voila. Damn it. Of course, what do I do with my hot pad again? <laughs> Me and my hot pads. All right, so now we can take this and it is more like a glaze. And yeah. For plating purposes, I will, I have a little splash, so I'm gonna push. That, oh, and then push. There we go. I like food to look pretty, you know? I can take this and easily use my spoon here to bring this around into here. I can use a paper towel if I want to not touch it. But do you know how beautiful and saucy and delicious that is? How quick was it? You, it's just, it's, it's amazing. You could use blue cheese. I mean, just, food does not have to be boring. And it doesn't have to take forever either. I mean, yeah, I've been at this a little bit, but I spent most of my just time just talking and puttering, so it takes a little bit longer. Shall we see what it tastes like? Shall we taste it? What do we, what do we got going on here? Uh, let's see. Let's see if there's anything else. Oop. Nope, we're still it. You are making me hungry. You're making me hungry. A fork. Oh, it's all squish. Cheese. Meat. Mushroom. I gotta cut this down into a, a small little bite here because it's a big bite. And just, mm. And that is a perfect medium, medium well. Mm. Now I don't know which one I like, which one I like better because I'm gonna tell you right now. This is probably what I'm gonna have for dinner. Those I can reheat. I hope I'm gonna get halfway through this, but still, guys. Thank you for joining in with me. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna change the title instead of stuffed mu stuffed mushrooms. I will put the other dish in here. <laughs> I don't even know what to call it yet. But I do thank you for watching. If you find some value, consider becoming a supporter. I appreciate it. It helps keep me cooking. Um, have a wonderful day. Start this challenge out. If you've been off plan or you're just wanting to push forward, go strong. Do 31 days of just keto any way you want, so long as it's keto. All right? And I will see you guys tomorrow, somehow, some way. I hope to be just kind of doing some little something. Nothing as long as this. It might be just a chat. It might be just an upload in my story. It might be on the community page. So be looking out because I'm going to post tomorrow too. And I'm going to try my best. I say try, because life happens, to uh, share with you guys what I'm eating throughout this month. Uh, remember guys, fats first, moderate protein, low carb, and get you some.